On today's show, the guys are talking with GT specialist Chad Morris about his Erie, Arkansas program. We've got all of that and more up next on EduTech Guy. You're listening to the EduTech Guys, edutechguys.com. Yeah, hey, welcome to the show. I'm David Henderson. Hey, I'm Jeff Madlock. Yeah, thank you so much for coming in, coming on, turning up, downloading, grabbing the show, listening, hanging out with us. We're just glad you're here. We are. We are glad you're here. It's going to be a good show today. One of our friends, good old friends, longtime friends is going to oh, be on Especially for show. you. Yeah, I've known him since, uh, well, we grew up together. Yeah. So... Yeah, but gonna, it's going to be a cool show. Erie, Arkansas. It's uh, all about all the uh, cool things like the Falk Monster and uh, the Garden Light and uh, haunted houses and hotels and things like that. And how Chad is, uh, Morris has taken them and turned them into something you know, even more fun and educational and you know everything from uh, lesson plans to the whole bit and his whole spiel. So it's going to be a fun show for sure. Yeah, definitely, man. Hey, we just got back from uh, ACOT, uh, which is the Arkansas Conference of Technology. At the time we're recording this, we've Actually, been back a little bit, but the time we're recording this, and uh, that was great. That was a lot of fun. Be sure to check out our conference coverage. You can Google that all to your heart's content and check out the uh, coverage that we end, we actually uh, and and I actually ended up is what I'm trying to say, interviewing almost like 20 people. Yeah, it yeah, was great, good, good gaggle of folks that showed up at the. Uh, we were at the White River Services hosted us at the White River Services booth there, and it was really nice. And a lot of folks come by. Hey, just if you want to find anything out about us, just go out to Google and type in Edutech Guys, E-D-U-T-E-C-H-G-U-Y-S, and you will find us out there. I'll tell you what, we're going to take a quick break here, a little something from one of our sponsors, or, you know, maybe just some music, or just Jeff belly dancing to some uh, belly dancing music. I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) We'll be right back after this. This conversation brought to you by White River Services and Solution. They're a total technology solution provider. They're a trusted advisor and engineering partner to their clients and offer the best hardware and software manufacturers in the world with a local presence on which they can rely. Their team can simply provide you with the hardware and software you need to maintain your IT goals, or they can engineer a complete solution, including pre-project engineering, managed IT services, leasing, installation, asset recovery and disposal, and E-rate fulfillment. Contact White River Services and Solutions at whiteriverservices.com. Hey, welcome back to the EduTech Guys. We have a good friend of ours here with us, and we're going to talk about some really cool stuff he does. And then it's a it's a program. I don't know if it's a program. It's a, it's a thing. <laughs> it started because uh, we used to hang out at this old haunted house. When, yeah, that's a long story. Long time ago. <laughs> but um, uh, we have a we have a person in the seat next to us. We're going to let him introduce himself, tell us who he is, and all that kind of good stuff. So here we go. Yeah, David Henderson. <laughs> Oh, no. Oh, no. David Henderson. More coronation. Um, Chad Morris. I'm the gifted and talented specialist for uh, Southwest Arkansas and South Central Arkansas. So, I serve close to 20 different school districts in my role as a gifted educator. You got the whole southern part of the state covered when it comes to most of LA and yeah. I tell people I work in I work for LA, Lower Arkansas, San Bernardino Bernardino Valley, (laughs) (laughs) Bernardino. Bernardino. (laughs) Yep, yep. Uh, The San Bernardino, because he was a Dino. His name was Barney. There you go. (laughs) So okay, let's talk about Erie, Arkansas. So how did it come about? How did you come up with this idea of (sighs) so? It was either the year of the pandemic, um, so I always refer to time now as BC, uh, you know, before COVID, and uh, <laughs> AC after COVID. I think it was the year of, or either the year before, um, that some of our guidelines from um, Desi, from our, our state legislator, that would require training for teachers um, for further PD during the summer was uh, Arkansas history. 
So we wanted a, a big emphasis on Arkansas history. So, you know, that was kind of one of those things that um, there are no specialists for social studies or there weren't at the time in Arkansas. And so, you know, my bosses were like, OK, we need someone really weird uh, and strange to come up with something that, you know, we could do for for history. Oh, Chad. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and I, I, you know, I'm, I'm kind of a history buff, too. And so I was like, all right, you know, I'll, I'll come to think of something. And um, the more I just really looked into Arkansas and, and the history of Arkansas, you know, I've, I'll admit when I was in the classroom, we had uh, when in. You know, there was a couple of weeks left in the school year, and my principal would come and go, have you taught any Arkansas history? I'm like, oh, yeah, lots, loads. Sure, all the time. Arkansas history did it up. And then I would go to the shelf and get the little thin red and blue sparkle Arkansas history textbook that still listed Bill Clinton as the governor of Arkansas. And Johnny Cash is one of Arkansas's top ten selling music artists. Uh, (laughs) And teach from it. And I was like, no. We need to do something a little different. So um, I kind of looked, and I've always been fascinated with folklore here in Arkansas. And I'm I'm not a guy, and David can attest to this, I I like mysteries, but I'm not a spook kind of guy, you know, spooky stuff that I'm just kind of like, I love a good story. Mm -hmm. And, um, and that comes from just hearing stuff from my grandparents and parents and all that. So I was like, what if we looked into uh, Arkansas history that revolved around kind of the legends and myths of Arkansas, because in doing that, you can bring in all the different communities across Arkansas. You really bring in a lot of your history of Arkansas. And I really approached it as let's talk about Arkansas history, the kind of the same way that we talk about trauma with our kids. Social study and history. And see, I think of Arkansas and trauma. It's the first thing that comes to my brain. Because I've had a traumatic time here for my 53 years. Yeah, well, (laughs) that too. But we kind of look at history. I I look at history as um, looking back in in, in right to your question of this is why we are the way we are. (laughs) And and history paints a good picture. And a few head drops, but it's a long (laughs) time. You picked me up and shook me like a dog. (laughs) So I, that's that's how that all started. So I kind of threw that idea out to um, my bosses, and they were just kind of like, okay, whatever. And um, that year, when I did the first uh, Erie, Arkansas, in in let me, let just for the record here, it wasn't we're going to do professional development of how to tell ghost stories to your kids. That that's not it at all. It was more of let's look at these mysterious phenomenon. Uh, that are in our, our our state, and let's come up with a rational theory of why this is happening, and and how to teach that to your kids, how to teach deductive reasoning to your kids when they come up with theories. So that first year, we uh, decided uh, that I was going to do uh, the Garden Light um, and uh, the Falk Monster. And we had close to 680 participants mm-hmm. that one in that first year of we doing it. And then, uh, you know, my wife, Monica, was like, we may be on to something here. <laughs> and so I was kind of like, OK. And um, <clears throat> I found myself the first year, the second year uh, in doing this, that I wasn't just providing that PD for my districts in Southwest or South Central. Man, I'm... I'm statewide on this. Like just the, earlier this week, um, I did a session with um, students from Hackett, Arkansas, and then students again from uh, Lisa Academy in North Little Rock. Mm, yeah. So just one of those things. Well, I, I think it also helped that um, because we are in L.A., lower Arkansas, mm-hmm. uh, there are multiple myths. You, you mentioned a couple already. Garden Light is one. And, and yeah. for those of you that are out there listening and have no idea what we're talking about, um, just a, an example, the Garden Light is uh, basically this mysterious light that would supposedly appear at different times. It was along, at that time, railroad tracks, which had been oh. since picked up, and now it's a walking trail. But... Um, there, there was kind of this floating light, that, and it's got myths behind it. And then uh, in Texarkana, there's the Falk Monster, which most of you have probably never heard of. However, you may have heard of The Legend of Boggy Creek, yeah. uh, which was a movie 
Ish in the 70s, uh, that uh, kind of a cult classic type thing around <clears throat> around that particular myth. And so I, I think that to me is kind of what helped spark some of this oh, yeah. was that there were already things that we, you know, I, I, I didn't grow up in Arkansas. I, I came here in 1990, but I mean, almost immediately because of where I moved, the Gurdon Light was like, that was part of the conversation. And that was oh, the yeah. thing that like all the college kids went and did, <laughs> you know. Oh, on the weekend, we're going to go see the Garden Light, and I'm like, the what? What is it? You know, and so uh, I just, and, and then of course, you know, it has expanded. Now I think you're on, I don't know if you call them seasons or versions or whatever you want to call it, but you're, you know, you're on your third iteration. And what's really cool is that you're just focusing on Arkansas. So you know, that that says a lot that there are so many of these myths and legends in Arkansas. But you touched on another key point, and that is that you, it, like you said, it's not ghost stories. I mean, there are ghost stories, but oh, yeah. it's the explanation of how do we find logical explanation? So talk a little bit about that, especially like, let's, let's just pick the garden light, for example. Sure, sure. Um, so when we're approaching these, when we're talking to teachers, uh, Vicki Jewell always has, she's our R&R at our co-op, and she starts off any of her lectures with new teachers of for any lesson to be successful, it needs a good hook. And that's a hook that grabs your kid's attention and goes, Ooh, I want to, I want to, you know, buy into that. And mysteries are perfect buy-ins because, you know, we live in a day and age now where we question everything and there's always another story to everything. And so when we started in on that, that's the hook to get going. And so the garden light was a good one because it, it, it starts off with the ghost story aspect of it, but the more you get into it, the more you, we brought up everything from geology to uh, the science. And um, the cool thing about it is my, my biggest fear was, you know, cause the garden light originates from an actual murder. Uh, I mean, this is, we found out that, like you said, we were talking earlier, all legends have a little bit of piece of <laughs> of truth to them mm-hmm. to get going. And the Garden Light all started with a, an actual murder that's documented there in Garden. And so, um, you know, I, I was really afraid the kids were going to be like, oh, God, we talked about a dude getting murdered. He's just going to get us. And uh, we, we definitely wanted to stray away from that. So um, we jumped into what could be the theories behind this. And so I do the trainings with the teachers in the summer. And then I do the sessions with the kids uh, after school starts. And so the kids came up with all these great theories <clears throat> that we look to. And I help them out a little bit. Like one of the theories behind that is um, we live on the, um, uh, the New Madrid fault line. And we looked into eyewitness accounts of anytime there's, you know, earthquakes and everything else, you know, strange stuff happens. And that fault line is moving constantly. And, uh, you know, the biggest earthquake we've ever had in our nation's history happened right along this. It stopped the Mississippi River from flowing at one point. And so strange lights are, are a, a thing of that, of things moving. Uh, I can tell you right now, like you said, when I was in college, Hey, what are we going to do today? Let's go down, walk the railroad tracks and go. And I, and I had seen it and I was like, wow, it's really there. That's, that's the garden light. I had no idea what it was. Immediately. I was like ghost and took off running. <laughs> well, I don't run. I only run if I'm chased. I walked briskly back to my vehicle, but, um, I mean, I was kind of like, well, that's there. I know, man, but there's gotta be a, you know, a logical explanation of that. So we explored theories like, uh, plate tectonics, which was, you know, it's it's as a kid sitting in a science classroom, and this week we're going to talk plate tectonics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But <laughs> it's the more we go when you mention plate tectonics again, you're like, oh yeah, we talked about that in Mr. Jackson's room. Or mm-hmm. so um, let's let's expand on that. We talked about. Um, um, Will of the Wisp, which is, you know, um, gases coming up and, you know, certain things that create you know, luminescence. Um, now, the Falk monster thing I thought was really cool because we didn't focus on the fact of it's a monster. Mm-hmm. We focused on the fact that um, this guy, oh, his name was Charles, um, totally forgot his name. I should have had my computer in front of me. Um, this guy from Texarkana, 
had heard these legends about the Falk monster. So he thought, you know what? I should make a movie about this. Borrowed $10,000 from um, an advertising agency there that dealt with truck driving there in Texarkana. Uh, took an old 35 millimeter camera and made probably one of the biggest, you know, cult horror movies of all that genre right there in the hometown. He actually hired um, high school students from Texas High to play the the cast and the role of the Legend of Boggy Creek. And uh, so we kind of talked about how it would be cool with, with your kids if, you know, not not that I want you going out in the woods and hunting down the foul monster. That's the last thing I want you to do. Uh, the fact of who do you have in your community that's famous hmm. that you could sit down and interview those people, those stories that those people have to tell, man, are priceless right now. So this year... Uh, we focused on with the with now with the teachers, uh, we focused quite a bit on um, Mount Holly Cemetery hmm. in Little Rock. And in that, when I learn something about Arkansas history, I'm just kind of like, wow, the kids are going to eat this up. And hmm. the teachers ate it up because we have we, we have a Pulitzer Prize uh, winning poet uh that buried there from Arkansas, uh, you know, and I'm just kind of like, wow, first Southern poet to win, uh, win the Pulitzer Prize buried there. You know, um, there's so many different, you know, history lessons that go in it. Not that I want teachers taking their kids out in the graveyard and <laughs> let's learn some history. I want to go home. <laughs> it's just kind of <laughs> one of those. But um, the other one that we did with the kids this year that I'm doing currently right now is the White River Monster. Hmm. Um, <clears throat> this claims of there's some type of monster fish and the White River. And it's great that that immediately when we start talking about this, um, you'll have you, you do have one to two kids go, has it ever eaten a person before? And you're like, mm, well, no. But then all the other theories that they hand in is like, what if it's an alligator car? Hmm. Those are pretty scary looking. What if it in one of the theories that um a biologist in 1980 uh, came up with was it could have been a seal. Hmm. Uh, and that's where we bring in geography because the White River is connected to the Mississippi River. The Mississippi River is connected to the Gulf of Mexico. And so um, it's pretty evident that something could swim up, especially a mammal that breathes, you know, like a seal. Uh, and they could see that because, you know, back in the first account in 1860s, uh, if someone was to see a seal in Arkansas, they first of all, they'd be like, I don't know how we're going to eat that. But, uh, <laughs> I don't know how we're going to cut that up, but we're going to try. Ronnie, get some poke salad. <laughs> <laughs> they might think, wow, that's a monster, man. And with all that, you know, before I even come up with the whole fact that we have evidence of a, a manatee swimming up 200 miles from the Gulf of Mexico to Memphis, you have a kid going, hey, well, this is connected to this, and this is connected mm -hmm. to this. Seals are mammals. Why couldn't they go up that way and, boom, make it to Newport, Arkansas, and now you have a monster in the water? So that's the way we approach it. Yeah. Um, to the fact that I don't, I don't want any teacher standing in front of a group of kids going, there's ghosts and they're coming to get you. Uh, <laughs> there's a monster in the water. No, no, no. We're, hmm. we're, we approach it from here's the mystery. Here's the legend behind the mystery. Here's the history behind the mystery. What could be happening here with logical, <laughs> right. deductive reasoning and common sense yeah. uh, on that? That's pretty exciting. I can't wait till you guys cover the Ozan Hood Rat. That's one of my favorites. <laughs> That's one of them, yeah. <laughs> We'll have to investigate that yeah. one. Are the, the, are the Crossroads Killer Crawdad? That's one of my... <laughs> scared the crap out of me as a kid. Uh-oh. The ghost oh, he's, coming. <laughs> he's coming. What was that? Uh, we're expanding the studio. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. 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 It's a hot tub they're putting in for us. Making big money here. So, um, uh, <laughs> so what's... Um, What's been the biggest one? I mean, there's got to be one that just everybody calls and says, listen, we want to do this one every time. Because, you know, you do one third grade group, you can do the same thing with the next third grade group, and those kids yep. just talk about it. Um, Have you had a big one that just always is the recurrent, maybe Falk? Is that the one? That the Garden Light gets the, the most yeah. attention on that. The, they love uh, the Garden Light. And there's all these other uh, great mysteries here in Arkansas that I would love to get on. And actually, I tackled uh, the uh, Crescent Hotel mm -hmm. um, this year with with teachers. I just don't know <laughs> how far I can go with it with kids because it revolves around ghosts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And in doing this with the teachers this summer and talking about there, there's a lot 
of uh, research out there that can explain why people think they see ghosts. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a lot of things that from vision to your brain to uh, audio pareidolia, uh, things like that, that make you think, oh, my God, there's a ghost there. When really, you know, I think Eddie Murphy had the old joke that have you ever been sitting in your room late at night? And if you stare at a coat rack long enough, it'll reach up and go, hey, how you doing? (laughs) (laughs) I mean, it's just, you know. Too bad we can't stay, baby. (laughs) (laughs) You know, that's so the garden line has been, uh, to me, the one that most people have um, jumped on on that because there's a lot. There was a lot of history that goes along with it. There's a lot of science. There's a lot of geology that goes in with that. So they really dug that. That's uh, cool, man. That's really cool. So um, if the listeners want to find out more and want to get in touch with you, what's the best way they can do that? So the best way to do that is go to our co-op website, SWAEC.org. Um, on, I think it says staff, or no, it says departments. On one of the drop down menus on departments, you'll just hit that drop down arrow and you'll see gifted and talented. And if you'll click on that, um, not only does it have my contact information on there, I also have week long lesson plans that I have created that has the lesson plan, that has the PowerPoint, that has the videos in it. All you have to do is Click, download them. They're yours to use. So, cool. Well, I look forward to seeing Erie, Texas and Erie, Oklahoma. And <laughs> I'm not branching out that far. <laughs> I tell you what, though, I will say this. Um, we've covered quite a bit. Uh, we've done uh, the Garden Light. We've done the um, uh, the Falk Monster, the White River Monster, the Crescent Hotel, uh, Mount Holly Cemetery. We've done some pretty cool stuff. Um in a lot of that research on there, man, I keep on coming up with these cool stories yeah. about our universities here in Arkansas. Oh, yeah. That almost every university has this <laughs> legend of the problem with that is that's going to be cool to do with teachers. Mm-hmm. It's not going to be cool to do. With, I'm trying to find my way to, uh, to kids because they almost all revolve around some tragic ghost story and I just can't stand in front of kids going this lady threw herself off a cliff because like the one in Arkadelphia at at, um, Washita she threw herself down the elevator shaft yeah because her boyfriend was at Henderson and and, yeah and died in World War One or or something something like that and she killed herself and yeah yeah and so now she pops up at homecoming games and you're like oh hey there she is pretty soon it's like well Jeff couldn't get the new (laughs) McRib so he threw himself into traffic and that is that that is a whole different spin on that Aerosmith well yeah (laughs) <laughs> That's mm. horrible, man. <laughs> oh, I was, I was thinking dude in the elevator. I mean, <laughs> loving an elevator. I was, That's dude, what we were talking thinking. about. I was thinking dude looks like an elevator. No, <laughs> dude looks like an elevator. <laughs> no, this is 2022. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm <No>. an elevator. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Um, yeah, so um, I'm finding some cool stuff in that. Um, That's cool, man. Some cool stuff in that. And even one where, like, my son just graduated from Arkansas Tech and Tech has a lot Mm -hmm. uh, a couple of ghost stories on there they even have like at the girls dormitory there's actually a window part that's all bricked up that has to do with one of those ghost stories. So I'm <laughs> and truly, it just leaked. And so they just <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. Hey, look at that, Ronnie. That bun bricked break up that window. Well, Bring you let's up. make up a story that's about right. it because you know. <laughs> but the cool thing about that is is uh, studying the history of our major universities. Man, it brings up a lot of our state history. That, yeah. That's pretty neat. Yeah. yeah, that's pretty cool. There's tons of them. But, you know, and it's funny. You're talking about the Garden Light. There was one thing I love about the Garden Light: the International Society of the Hoo Hoo. Which that's there. That's where it's actually. That's its headquarters. Look it up. It is. And it's, I know. And yeah, it's the, it's international. That of is the a, what the the hoo hoo. The hoo hoo. Their black cat is their is their logo, and it's been there since the town was founded. But it's an international society of woodsmen. Oh, and that's a big history about that whole area. That's why Georgia Pacific is there, and uh-huh. all the wood stuff. That's where it all started, and the trains that came through were mostly loaded with wood. But that's the international. So you've got this. If you want to throw that in there, the International Society of the Hoo Hoo. It's its real name. They have a building downtown with black cats on it, and all their little Gideon type symbols and stuff oh, like man. that. That's yeah. kind of cool. It's in Gurdon. So I will tell you that Gurdon has really embraced 
all this history of the Grand yeah, Line. They got a they, sign. They actually have. <laughs> <laughs> they have a whole sign. It's, a, it's made about the balsa wood. We got uniforms and everything. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, they actually have made the. I believe it's finished now. The Garden Light. Trail, trail. Yeah. that you go and you can, so no more stepping over the trestles and going. Y'all come back, I'm stuck. My yeah. foot fell through. Mama, look at animatronic <laughs> possum. <laughs> <laughs> so that you know, that's pretty cool on that. I think. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everybody. I'm Ronnie the possum. I'm gonna take you on the trail to see the garden light. And when you get back to the gift shop, don't forget to buy my hat. <laughs> Sorry. I will tell you this story though. Um, I have a friend of mine, I, I did the Crescent Hotel, and I have a friend of mine that's also a GT specialist um, up in uh, northern Arkansas. And so she came to me uh, this summer, she was like, hey, Chad, I got a great idea. All right, you ready for this? I know the people that run the Crescent Hotel, and they're going to get you a chance to get in there, and you can stay in there, and it's going to be cool, and you can do a first-hand deal. And I said, nope. Yeah. <laughs> True story. 1990, my jazz group, Blue Acoustic, played for the jazz festival up there in Eureka yeah. Springs, and we stayed there. Uh-uh. And we played on the rooftop. You know, they have that rooftop yeah. bar and stuff, but we stayed there. I uh, won't mention names, but the sax player, Dave Clark, and uh, <laughs> Mike Spragans, and those guys were staying in a room and they kept locking their door and shutting it and they would wake up and it would be halfway open. See, so that furthermore anyway, I slept in the, the car. fact that <laughs> I won't be going to the Crescent yeah. Hotel. Because don't get me wrong, I love talking about that stuff, talking about it. Yeah. But yeah, no. dolls and Annabelles and stuff yeah. like that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well see, I, th- I think you know you were talking about animatronic <laughs> possums, but I, I think I think what they need to do up in Prescott, Arkansas is is fire up an animatronic old Mike. See? That was one of the mm-hmm. other legends we got co- oh, into. Yeah. Old and Mike. We, we, had a, <laughs> we had an employee a couple of years ago at the co-op, and uh, he was from India, and he could not grasp the concept that for, what, 60-something years? Yeah, it was in a Prescott, closet, yeah. They didn't know who this dude was. They found him dead, so they embalmed him and stuck <laughs> him in the front window. I'm like, welcome to Arkansas, buddy. <laughs> and so, kids, that's the story of transients in Southwest Arkansas. <laughs> So <laughs> that's your civics lesson for this week. <laughs> he just still to this day was like, and they just put him in the window. I was like, oh yeah, no, he yeah. sold pencils. <laughs> me yeah. Up. yeah, they finally in buried the him, window. I believe. Yeah, because the lieutenant raised. governor said bury him. <laughs> listen, you got to quit opening the door with a dead mummy in there. <laughs> yeah. That's just gonna work for listen, me. Listen, you, you can't have a dead guy standing in the storefront, man. We're that's, gonna have to do something about good. that yeah. right there. <laughs> we're, we're trying to put a lubies across the street. That's ruining <laughs> business right there. <laughs> <laughs> listen, I hear if I get the fish fillet with onions, I get a free ticket to see <laughs> Mike. Uh, <laughs> okay, uh, listen, yeah. hey, we'll get out of here. It's been a great show. We want to thank Chad Morris, the gifted and talented specialist from the Southwest Arkansas Educational Cooperative, for coming by and talking with us. We hope to have him back for more episodes in the future. I'll tell you what, we'll be right back with more right after this. Are you using Soundtrap for personal use, recording podcasts, making music, and more? More importantly, are you using Soundtrap in the classroom? Soundtrap for the classroom is amazing, allowing students the ability to create music, podcasts, audio for their projects, and so much more. Check out Soundtrap now at Soundtrap.com. Hey, thank you so much to Chad Morris for spending some time with us and chatting about all the cool stuff that not only he's doing in GT, but specifically with uh, Erie, Arkansas and all of the myths and legends. And I really like your idea of uh, having that similar situation, you know, that kind of a program for any state, all the states for that matter. Oh, yeah. It'd be really cool. And I mean, I'm, I'm not going to sleep all weekend, especially this close to Halloween. So. Yeah, yeah, that's a great and time. if you're wondering, we did not plan this to be the Halloween episode of the Edge of Tech Guys. It just worked out so well. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, it's a great stuff. If you ever want to find anything out about Chad, about Erie, Arkansas, just hit uh, the Southwest Arkansas Educational Cooperative website, swaec.org. 
And you can look on there to find Chad's information and get in touch with him and find out more about Erie, Arkansas. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> Stab me in the eye. Anyway, hey, listen. Uh, hey, thanks for listening to the show. Um, we're kind of getting back into the swing of things here. We've been off because school started and we got busy and we had some conferences and, you know, other things. All the stuffs. You know, it's really interesting. I don't want to mention it, but since the pandemic, it's just been kind of hard to get everything back together. You know what? Yeah, uh, the the groove is definitely off, but we'll, you know we'll we'll, we'll find a groove. We'll oh, the edutech. That's the next. It, it, it was Stella. How Stella got her groove back was a movie. Narcissus. How edutech guys got their groove. That's back. right. That's part, right. That's how Stella movie part two <laughs> with us it stars two Jeff and David in it. But that's uh, right. the groove hey, is in the heart. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey, listen, we are going to be at some other conferences. FETC is one of them. Yeah. We'll be there in January. If you haven't already signed up, FETC, uh, the future of education and technology. Is is going to be in uh, New Orleans this year. Yeah. So you should sign up for it. Just check out their website, FETC.org. Don't forget about ISTE and all the rest of them. They're all out there. ISTE.org, I S T E.org. But yeah, we'll be there <clears throat> with bells on and, you know, looking really sh- pretty. <laughs> sh- pretty. Sh- pretty. <laughs> with our shorty balls. <laughs> Schmeckle. So, <laughs> I tell you what, don't forget to follow us on the web, EduTech Guys. Just type it into Google. You'll find us everywhere on all your favorite podcast platforms and your social medias with your, your bitters and your twatters and your face and cheeks and all that stuff, your cheek books. I, I, I hope now that, that you know Twitter has changed ownership, I, I, I assume we'll still be allowed to play there. Ah, you know, that's we'll a good question. Out. Muskie owns it now, so I there's know. no telling <laughs> what's going to happen with that. It's hard to say. Hey, all you educators out there, find your social media and hold on to it. Hug it when you can, because it could be gone soon. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, listen, it's been a great show. I'm Jeff Madlock. I'm David Henderson. We'll catch you next time. You're listening to the EduTech Guys. EduTechGuys.com